to a parent that it didn't really matter whether a child could spell just so long as they felt good. What do you think is more important? Go back to school with John Stossel for a surprising look at what your kids are learning when 2020 Wednesday continues. Do you live in a world where competition is frowned upon? All people are treated equally, and no one is allowed to fail. Well, neither do we. But there's a good chance our children do. It's part of a nationwide effort to make all children feel special, feel good about themselves above all else. And you see it everywhere, from the classroom to the ball field. So what's wrong with that, you may ask? According to John Stossel, a lot. <laughs> Things are different in classrooms these days. Now when kids sing about heroes, they're not thinking about Abe Lincoln. They're singing about themselves. Can you tell us what a warm fuzzy is? Time once spent on reading and writing now goes to things like giving warm fuzzy, also known as compliments. I like your hair. Me. Just one of many activities designed to make kids feel special. I'm one of a kind. If not conceited. Today I'm selling a super duper fabulous fantastic thing. Me. It's called the self esteem movement. I have a lot of talent. I like it's to based on the premise that since successful people like seem to have high self esteem, then if we teach self esteem, we'll get successful people. That would be reasonable happy to be me. if it worked. But even after doing this for more than 20 years, we are happy. You are you. No one's been able to prove that it does work. And they've tried. California spent three years and three quarters of a million dollars on the task force to promote self-esteem. But this study they initiated failed to show that self-esteem courses led to achievement. Some parents are getting worried. They were telling me as a teacher to a parent that it didn't really matter whether a child could spell just so long as they felt good. So some kids are feeling good about themselves, but they're not learning? That's right. That's right. Exactly. Yet school systems keep paying big money to pump up everyone's self-esteem. What if everybody in this school basically had the thought, you know, I love myself unconditionally? Consultants like Bob Moad make as much as $10,000 a day preaching the merits of loving yourself. And even though you may fail on a test or lose a job, you're not a failure, you're not a loser, because you're not what you do. We taped Moad in rural Missouri, where he was teaching teachers and students not to be too concerned with talent or achievement. If you think you need to prove worth of your achievement, you're walking on a real thin ice. And talent, talent, talent's so overrated. Kids like the message. I talked to this group in New York. And you come out of these courses and you feel good? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Good about yourself? Yeah. These three attend self-esteem classes 20 minutes every day. And you learned a song or something? Can you do it for me? Hey, look me over. I'm proud to be me. My perception of myself is strong as it can be. Fourth grader Melissa Nappi says the course made her proud of herself. At the beginning of every assembly, we like look at our hands and go, nobody else has these hands, these are your hands. Even your right and left are different. And why does that make you proud? It shows that you're special in a way. Gee, I think you were special if your right and left hands were the same. But making kids feel special has become so important that many schools now avoid anything that might make anybody feel bad. Competition's often a dirty word. Many schools have eliminated honor rolls because the other kids might feel bad. Some schools won't give out D's or F's, and getting good grades is easier. Twenty years ago, only a fourth of students heading for college had an A or B average. Today, SAT scores are lower, but three-fourths of the kids have A or B averages. This coddling goes on outside classrooms, too. In kids' soccer leagues, trophies are not just for winners. Everybody gets one. Is it better if everybody gets an award? Hey, it's better than getting no award, right? Melissa! Well, I'm not sure, because the kids getting trophies don't seem as excited about it. Everybody gets them. Everybody gets blue. No champion. Yep. Everybody the winner. Many kids told us they like it this way. You feel good, no matter what. You came in last, you get a trophy, you feel good. Nine-year-old Eric Grandmason took a self-esteem course and told us he learned from it. There was a little poster up on the wall, and it said, Mistakes are beautiful opportunities to learn. If you don't make a mistake, who cares? 
But does he mean it? When we watched him playing goalie and being scored on, it sure looked like he cared. Eric plays here in the Massachusetts Youth Soccer League, which is decreed not just that everyone gets a trophy, but in tournaments among kids under 10, no score will be kept. No winners. Melissa! Melissa! But someone's in denial here because it's clear that the parents think there are winners. And the kids think there are winners. Some coaches say the policy's silly. It's not really what life's all about. Life's not about everybody being equal. Telling them that they can't keep scores, silly. Take that away, you're taking the meat and potatoes away from life. Of course, giving up some meat and potatoes would be worth it if it helped the kids learn or do better in life. But now we know that not only is there no proof that minimizing competition helps the kids, there's now evidence that telling everybody they're great may actually hurt them. When you praise children lavishly for easy things, why should that make them want to do hard things? Psychology professor Carol Dweck of Columbia University recently published findings that show that the kind of praise found in self-esteem courses may actually hurt children's performance. She repeated her experiment for us. Fifth graders are given an easy puzzle to solve, then told how smart they are. That's a really good score. You must be smart with these problems. <laughs> I think she's really smart at these problems. Another group isn't told that they're smart, only that they tried hard. Right. That's a really high score. You must have worked hard on these problems. So you must have worked hard on these problems. Then both groups are given a much harder test. Everyone does poorly on that. You only got one of those right, which isn't as good as last time. What happens next is surprising. The kids are asked to take more tests. Kids who were praised for trying, like Cody, are eager to try more. Some actually asked to take work home. But those who were told they are smart were reluctant to face further challenges. And they could not handle setbacks. That's why not to tell Johnny he's brilliant. It gets him caught up in being brilliant rather than learning. You are truly magnificent, Shannon. Praise like this can lead to embarrassments like this. An international study of 13-year-olds found American kids ranked last in math, but rated their performance as above average. Korean kids were much less satisfied with themselves, but they ranked first. Kids need honest feedback, say Dweck and others. Can you count by nines? Yes! Do and they need to learn that excellence comes from effort. If you're never told what your weaknesses are, how will you improve on them? Protecting kids from failure, they say, is the worst sort of false kindness. And we need to build their self-image but such arguments haven't made a dent in the self-esteem movement. We need to help non-readers read by affirming that they enjoy reading. non -spellers... You tell the non-reader that he enjoys reading? Yep. But he doesn't read. But he doesn't read. You're lying He's to a him. poor reading. It, 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 is that lying? I mean, as an educator, as a parent, I can either affirm where you are, or I can affirm what you're capable of becoming. Just by telling the non-reader that she's a good reader... You're a good reader. And then she'll... You enjoy reading. She hears it and says, this guy's nuts. She thinks I'm nuts. In fact, this is, this is educate, to pull from within. See, educate is not transmit information. Don't buy into Webster's dictionary definition of educate. What does it mean, to pull from within? Shouldn't self-esteem come because you have achieved? No, I do not think that you need to have your esteem based on achievement. Perhaps the most unexpected bad news about the self-esteem movement is that some experts say it may actually be dangerous. For years we've been told that kids in trouble suffer from low self-esteem, a concept used to try to make sense of the horrible school shooting sprees of the past year. But new research suggests the self-esteem advocates have it backwards. Violence may be the result of artificially high self-esteem. People who have this inflated, grandiose view of themselves when other people criticize them uh, they, they're likely to, to lash out and become angry and aggressive. Psychology professors Brad Bushman and Roy Baumeister did research in over a thousand undergraduates and found that people who thought they were superior or who had inflated views of themselves were more aggressive. We asked them to show us the study. Bushman and Baumeister gave students a standardized questionnaire that asked true or false questions like, if I ruled the world, it would be a better place. This man scored in the 98th percentile. He has a very high opinion of himself. 
Then each student was asked to write a short essay and told an unidentified partner would judge it. In truth, there were no partners, but students like him were told, this is the worst essay I've ever seen. Next, they were given a chance to torture the phantom partner who'd criticized them. They were told if they could press a button faster than their opponent, they could blast them with noise. It turned out that students like this man, the students with inflated self-esteem, were three times more aggressive, much more likely to try to blast the other guy's eardrum. Conceited people get nasty when you burst their bubble of self-love. Consider violent prisoners. Conventional wisdom says convicts have low self-esteem, and maybe they're violent because they don't like themselves. But we went to this prison and gave 65 criminals the self-esteem test. It turned out that as a group, these guys feel much better about themselves than college students who took the same test. Self-esteem. Now, we're not saying that self-esteem classes lead to violence, but the claim that the classes reduce violence is dubious. Yet the schools don't seem to hear that even though lately more critics are speaking out. The head of the American Psychological Association now says promoting baseless self-esteem is dangerous. The tide seems to be turning on the self-esteem movement. A lot of people saying, wait a second, maybe we screwed up believing people like you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what tide you're... Uh, I'm in the middle of the tide. I would say the wave is, is getting bigger and that the tide is still coming in. Maybe it's because you parents don't know how poorly your kids are doing. Because the school, so happy and filled with self-esteem, don't tell you the truth about what's going on. When last surveyed, more than 90% of American school districts claim to be performing above average. Wow, test scores are falling, but 90% of the schools are above average. The proponents of the self-esteem movement say these classes are working to produce better grades and a reduction in violence. And even opponents say there's nothing wrong with praise. But acknowledge the effort, they say, not a child's traits. It's better to say, you worked really hard, than to tell a child, you're so smart. In a moment, what you had to say about our interview 